Okay, now these are the basic operations that we can do and there are many more. We are not going to go into all, you, you can explore, but uh, you just see that how to do define variables and how to create list arrays and how to do addition, subtractions, like basic operations, not only on the numbers, but also on the strings. And then you saw that uh, how to uh, write conditions like if else and uh, how to do looping act loopings like um, uh, for loop and a while. Now we are often we have to deal with the data and that data may be coming in some files which we need to read and do operations on that. To reading the files Python has this very handy library called uh, pandas and uh, when we want, so if you want to use it, again we need to first load it and uh, and also like it's not necessary that all the Python, if you have just installed the basic version of the Python, it has already this pandas inbuilt it, but maybe you want to get that uh, uh, library okay, in your installation. And by the way, I think if you install panda and all, sorry, anaconda and all, maybe that will already have this uh, uh, packages readily installed. Okay, so let's first get this pandas library imported as pd and now I have have a file called pokeman underscore data. So that I have stored here, uh, it is in the same directory where I am running this uh, Jupyter notebook and here we have so many options available to play with our data. First. First thing is we need to read all the data and get into a data frame or like get it into some array. So Python provides a very handy uh, way of getting this data in terms of a data frames. Uh, first I can read all the content of my CSV file and put it into a variable which I am denoting as df here. To read this all I need to do is simply write pd dot read.csv. Read.csv is the function I need to call to read all the content of my file. Now suppose I want to see, okay maybe let us uh, clear all my cells here, okay now all the things are fine, I have to only get started here. Now I have imported my um, pandas library. And now when I read this, all the data is now come into this variable df here. And now in the df, suppose now I can do various operations. One of the operations I want to see that, I want to see what all the headers, right? Okay, maybe let us open uh, this file here. This is a file, let me see I can open this. Okay, let me not open like this. Let me first download and open it. Okay, let me see if I can open it in Excel. Okay, now you see that whenever I have a such a uh, data set, the first row will be usually what type of column it has and uh, then uh, first row is what type column and usually the first column will be basically index, indexing each of the rows and uh, after that for each row you will have attributes for all of these columns. Okay. So when we have such a data loaded, first we want to see that what are the headers in this, what type data 
is stored in this file. So, if you want to read this first row and here you see that, uh, so this is a Pokemon data set, uh, I do not know much, I have not seen this uh, Pokemon, it looks like a famous cartoon. There are famous uh, very lots of Pokemons and uh, they come in different types, maybe uh, type 1 and type 2 and under type 1 also they have different values like grass, fire, water and all and uh, under type 2 it is like a poison, flying dragon and all and they have some other characters like what is their HP, attack, defense, I do not know what is uh, SP attack, maybe special attack or special defense whatever. All this information is stored here and now when I want to, when I use this function dot head and give phi, what is going to show me? It will show me the all the phi header and it show me the first top phi rows. And the first phi top rows are, this is, this is like gives me a first immediate glimpse of what this data is containing, like what kind of uh, attributes it is, like maybe I can treat these are like attributes, type 1, type 2, HP, attack, defense, these are like attributes of the data. And now, in the defense, uh, in this uh, df uh, variable, I can now see that what are its columns, okay. Uh, now it shows, it is simply going to, see so when you did this dot head, it kind of nicely showed me in a little formatted way what are the uh, columns and uh, showed me information about this columns by displaying the first few rows. But when you do this uh, df column, it will simply showing me the first row, okay. So, it will giving me some information about what the first row is about and now I can do lot of operations. All the data is saved in my variable df now. Suppose I am only interested in the two columns which has this uh, uh, name uh, and type 1 as their attributes and I want to see the first phi rows of these two columns. So, I have to just use this function. So, this is uh, specifying how many rows I want to see and uh, this one is specifying which columns I would be interested in. Okay, So, here it is just showing me this column name column and type 1 column and only showing the first 5 rows. And similarly, if I want to see the first 4 rows and column, okay. So, here 0 to 4 rows are shown. So, notice that here only integer locations are shown here and uh, in our data he had the first row did not correspond to an integer right it was like something hash here so the integer is starting from 1 here I think yeah, that is where it started and uh, uh, it and it showed the next 4 rows okay and it showed me the first column here. Sorry, here index is 1 that means it may showed me the values from the second column. Similarly, if I am interested in only particular value, let us say I am interested in the uh, index 2 on the row and index 1 on the column, I can just specify that using my iloc function i lock here stands for i think integer location and uh, that is in my data is simply when you saw okay now i may be interested in knowing for i am now let's say i am interested in only on one column here type one column and i want to see that in this column where the value this attribute type is taking value 5 so then i need to get this first when I do this df type 1, that means it is focusing on my column with the type 1 as the attribute. 
and it is looking in that all where the value is matching to be fire and it will show me only those. Now if you look into it is only displaying me those rows where type 1 is all fire and this is happening in the rows 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 42, 43 like that. Okay. Now you can do sorting or maybe get some summary of your data and uh, there is a very convenient function called uh, describe. So here this describe function gives me kind of all these basic statistics like count, mean, standard deviation, minimum value, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile and the max value of each of my attributes here which are numerical. So notice that type 1 and type 2 uh, features are not numerical. Wherever that uh, uh, the features that corresponds to the numerical values for this all these basic statistics is shown. And now you can also get the values in ascending and uh, descending value by using this sort value function. Let us see what I get by executing this. So here I am using the name attribute and I want it to be put in an ascending order. So here 0 means it is going to uh, going to put it in a descending order. 0 means descending order. If you want it to be an ascending, it is 1. So here the variable is ascending, but its value is 0 or 1 based on that it is going to put it in ascending or descending. You see that even though the name has the, the string value, it has put them in a uh, descending value starting the first one here has a z and as you go down uh, yeah you will see that uh, uh, things are ordered starting from z and all the way to a in a dictionary way. And you can also make changes to your data uh, like uh, we did it in our list. So for suppose we have this many heads here uh, like attributes here suppose I want to add another one let us say I want to add another one total which is basically the sum of all the values that are happening in this HP column attack column and defense column and all I can do this and uh, if I do this now and when I see this now head now you will see that that total also so we have basically Earlier this total column was not there, but I added this column and I got this information. Okay, similarly, you can drop columns like this column. I am dropping the new column I added total. I am simply dropping by using this drop column. And whatever the modification you do to your data, now you can store it as a new file. Suppose like you have data. Uh, this df now you have initially loaded it from a file now you have done lot of modification or some modification on that now you want to save it as another csv file so you can say this modified csv and uh, give index as true then it will show it as a new file if i do this so that is what this modified file is what it gets just created just created just now it got created just now okay Okay, so there are many multiple things you can do like you can filter out your data for example in the type 1 you want to only look where the value is grass and only look for those where the type 2 is poison and you can list them. So if you look now type 1 is all grass and type 2 is all poison. You can do various permutation and combination of this. You want to list only those columns where the type 1 is grass or type 2 is poison you can just use this loc function and get them see here if you see that i type 1 i type 2 uh, at least one of them is grass or poison okay so you can do all the combinations here and uh, yeah you can even check these conditions and uh, get like here if what i've done is i've looked for type 1 to be grass and type 2 to be uh, poison and when the HP value is greater than 70. So you will see that in all the things I have there are all the HP values are greater than 70. Okay, I can also do some conditional changes 
like uh, if I have if I want to let's say type 1 wherever it is value is fire I want to replace it by let's say flamer I can do that by using this uh, uh, lock function again so you will see that uh, wherever that fire was there now it is got replaced by flamer and you can do the similar things here so there are other things like you can get some aggregate statistics I think uh, you can just uh, play around uh, you just look into this uh, function group by and you will get this so um, we'll stop here and I think with this we have all the basics of how to uh, create variables manipulate them not only uh, the locally but also read it from the another files and play around this so in the next session we will see that uh, how we can use uh, some of the uh, statistical tools on data and see how some of the things we have learned in this course can be used. Okay, with this we will stop here.